Hey guys, this is Josh with Depth Type Channel, and in this video we're going to be discussing the topic of do you have the right to repair your diesel engine or your gas engine or your piece of equipment or your computer or your phone or something like your electric impact wrench? You may own this piece of equipment or whatever it is, but should you be able to go in to the software, be able to communicate with the control modules and fix it yourself? It's an interesting question, isn't it? And somewhat of a modern problem because before computers, everything was mechanical. Now what got me thinking about this was a little over a month ago, I read an article, I believe it was on NBC News, and it was talking about a John Deere tractor owner, a farmer, and his inability to get his tractor fixed because the advanced electronics on it were having problems, but he doesn't have access to the software to be able to fix these problems or troubleshoot them. Neither does an independent dealer. It has to be a John Deere dealer, but the John Deere dealer is not staffed well enough to be able to get a technician to come out and fix his tractor in time. Now, farming is a very time-sensitive endeavor. Most businesses are, but crops in particular, not something that you can have sitting out when it's ready to harvest for weeks and weeks or a month. It's not like he's making toothbrushes and they're just gonna sit on the shelf. These are very time-sensitive items. So it got me thinking, and full disclosure, I work for a Caterpillar dealership, and as a Caterpillar dealership employee, I get full access to CAT's information service network, their software, I get everything that CAT has to offer when it comes to fixing CAT equipment, but more in particular, CAT diesel engines. But I run this YouTube channel, and the YouTube channel itself, I get emails all the time on people that own trucks and they're running into the same situation. They own the truck, but they don't have access to CAD ET or they live somewhere where there's really hardly any dealer support. Maybe they just have a simple check engine light or maybe they're having some more complicated, like a regen problem or something like that. And they get really frustrated because they don't have the tools, even if they have the technical know-how to fix these machines. So what exactly has happened? Well, initially, first diesel engines didn't have any electronics, and that includes gasoline engines. Of course, there were no computers back then, but they were fairly simple machines, strictly mechanical, no electronic controls. Well, mostly in the 1980s and the 90s, you started seeing the first computer designs starting to affect equipment and engines. And before then, everything was pretty much strictly mechanical, which meant as long as you had the right wrenches and tools to set up a fuel system, you could fix anything on your diesel engine. Well, with electronics, that's a little different because you need a way to communicate with the computer that's running the electronics. And that's when manufacturers, and this is not just CAD or Cummins or John Deere or anyone specific, started controlling, of course, their software that they design and they put in the machines. But this creates a problem because the person buying the machine or the truck engine or truck owns that. They own the vehicle and they own the control module, but not necessarily the software that runs it. But should they be able to communicate with it? That's a good question, isn't it? So currently, pretty much every manufacturer has their own software. To communicate with their own machines. This software is controlled by the manufacturers themselves. They control who it goes to and for how much it's sold or whether it's even sold at all to whoever they want to sell it to. Some dealers provide their dealer service software to anyone that's willing to buy it. Some will restrict the dealer service software to a customer version or a light version instead of the full dealer version and some don't even sell it to customers at all. But should they be made to? There are several laws in state legislatures and even at the congressional level, federal level, that are possibly going to require that manufacturers provide this to customers, the owners of the vehicle or the machine, and also to independent repair shops who, for the most part, are very limited in what they can do on the electronic side as far as fixing machines. Now, I'm sure some of those watching this video are thinking like, Government legislation is only going to further complicate the situation. But one thing you have to consider is that legislation by the government has helped complicate the situation already 
by their emission standards and mileage standards for diesel engines, making the engines more complicated already. So they would kind of be a fix for something, for a problem they've helped create in the first place. Now, of course, it's not solely on the doorstep of the states or the federal government. For this situation, manufacturers have also been involved the entire time. So, of course, currently, the manufacturers definitely have the control and the upper hand in the situation. But if these laws, these right to repair laws, which are being pushed by not only the owner, owners of machines and independent repair shops, but also there's certain consumer advocacy groups that are pushing this, that would put the ball in the court of the owner, not the manufacturer. Now, would that be necessarily a bad thing for the manufacturers, though? That remains to be seen. Of course, as the manufacturer, you would want to control your software that you designed for the equipment that you produced. This does a couple things. It limits the ability of people to modify it, maybe breaking emissions regulations or producing more horsepower than they are supposed to for such an engine or a piece of equipment. But it also allows you to monetize it more, either by selling licenses for the software or access to service information, which of course can make you money. But as the owner, it really puts you at a disadvantage because then you are pretty much solely only able to get your equipment serviced by a dealer. If the owners though were capable of doing it themselves or going to an independent shop, this would force the manufacturers and the dealers to be much more competitive. But would this create possibly a benefit that the manufacturers aren't seeing? Of course, if one manufacturer did this now, that would possibly put them at a disadvantage because other manufacturers would still be selling the software. But if they said, hey, you guys, we're gonna do an open source software system and give all the information for free, they would be kind of shooting themselves in their own foot. However, if it was required that all manufacturers had to basically give their service information systems out for free, and their information or software out for free, this could actually benefit the manufacturer. And how would it do that? Well, if you're using the actual manufacturer's software, you're less likely to get problems troubleshooting the system. Not only that, you're gonna be on the manufacturer's website to find this information. It's a perfect advertising and marketing opportunity for the manufacturer. Troubleshooting, let's say, a high pressure fuel pump. You're on their site already. They have the opportunity now to advertise to you that, hey, we have this pump in stock. It's right down the road. It's such and such dollars. Would you like to sell it for us? Click here. Advertising is a very powerful tool that people pay a lot of money for. And with this open, it would really drive the advertising to the customer or the owner for the manufacturer themselves. It would also drive them to the manufacturer website more than, so let's say, a forum or something else where the manufacturer is not involved anymore. So I think it could actually be an advantage for the manufacturers instead of a disadvantage necessarily. Now, of course, this is my opinion and it has been throughout the video, but what's your opinion? Why don't you leave it in the comments section? You know, what, what, what do you think the best situation is? Do you think the manufacturers should give all of their service information out for free to those that own them or wanna work on their equipment? their software licenses for free, should it be kept the same or maybe even made more restrictive? Is there a best situation? I, I don't know that there is. I would say in general, of course, I make lots of, I've made hundreds of videos on how CAD engines work, how to repair them, and I don't charge for those, but I'm not the manufacturer either. I'm just someone that works on them and I like making the videos, so. Well, that's all I have to say on this particular situation. Hope you enjoyed the video. And before we go, how about a little destruction of the week? This week's destruction of the week, we have some photos from our friend Jerry. And he sent me some Cummins pictures here. And if you're wondering what you're looking at, this is an oil pan. And what's inside is a mystery, isn't it? This is the cylinder head, obviously. Valves do not seem to be in there quite straight. I wonder what the heck's going on. With the valves removed, you can see something's definitely been in contact with the valves. And what could it be? Well, it would be this piston. Now you might be wondering, how the heck is the piston in the 
liner bore sideways, and where the heck is the liner? Well, you saw the liner in the first picture, where it was disintegrated in the pan. Here's what the piston's also supposed to look like compared to what it actually looks like. Pretty cool pictures. Thanks for sending them, and thanks for watching.